Good morning, everyone. It is currently Saturday, November 20th at like 7.30, 7.40, something like that. Super early for me anyway. I don't usually get up until like 20 minutes from now. <laughs> um, I'm getting ready for Ocean State Paracon. Me and my mom are going to go. It's in Plainville, Mass. I'm looking forward to it because I've only ever been to Maine Paracon. Um, but yeah, so it should be pretty fun. So I'm going to do my hair and everything, but I'm looking forward to it. Figured I would record a montage of how the um, Dyson Airwrap works. It's not mine, it's my mom's, but it's still fun to use. <laughs> all curled also that's my mom in the background but it's looking cute let <laughs> me just try here we go it's like more of a messy curl but that's okay my hair is super long so it kind of does its own thing but yeah so i'm gonna finish getting ready i gotta pack so i'm actually gonna be heading out to the airport later today all right don't mind the lighting i got my ring light here um i just got done filming some tiktok videos we're going to be um heading out in the next like 15 minutes or so to the Paracon. I think it's about an hour drive. Again, it's in Plainville, Mass. I'm looking forward to it and we're gonna meet some friends up there. So, oh, <laughs> excuse me, Miss Bella. I'm so tired. I'm so tired girl. <laughs> She's so over it. She's like, can I just please nap? But yeah, so we're getting ready for that right now, but super excited and looking forward to it. First time being here, Mom? Yes. Yeah. Me too. So I'm curious to see. It's at a casino, so that's kind of cool. Alright, so we're currently at the Ocean State Paracon. We've got everyone and all the booths and tables and everything. Huh? Off you're good. Um, and I'm currently over at Kogi and Satori's booth. We kind of know a couple, so if you want to check their stuff out, make sure you do. They got a bunch of these haunted dolls, um, and they brought them here to the Paracon. But what's really strange is for the main state Paracon, which I didn't get to show you guys that, um, one of the objects makes campfire smells and I definitely smelled it and I kept getting an overwhelming feeling and I had headaches and stuff being around the objects. Nothing today. Luckily, I don't know if it was because I was enclosed as far as the booth that they had, but I'm going to show you guys all the objects now. So they brought five of the most haunted objects. Here are their stories. This is Liza. known to move around and everything. They actually got this on footage. Watch the way she moves, it's crazy. Stands herself up. So that was one thing they got on camera with her. They got the angel of fire where this doll actually um, caught three Christmas trees on fire. And then Jolene, she's known to move around a lot throughout their museum where they have a bunch of different objects. The African doll and the African tribal mask. This is the mask that was creating that campfire smell that everyone kept smelling, the last Paracon. So that was pretty interesting. And they have a bunch of other dolls and cases. So cool. I've never really liked dolls and they do kind of freak me out, but what their stuff looks like. And then, oh, 
Oh, wait, I recognize that place. No, I'm just kidding. But, um, so this is a nail from the house. Um, during the Sleepless Unrest documentary, Kendall and Vera um, took this nail home and they were actually having activity in their house. So they donated this item to Cody and Satori because of what they were experiencing at home. So if you wanna, you know, pause the video and read this, but that was super interesting. So the Lizzie Warden case, which is super cool. Um, they have a 3D reconstructed skull of that. So this is only like a few of the many objects they have. Actually have like objects from serial killers and stuff too. Then they have this big sign up that says like, please do not provoke or touch any of the objects because obviously that would not be good. But yeah, so it's so unique, all these different stories um, on all these items. So make sure you go check out their stuff paranormal couple we're just sitting here kind of watching over the booth for now but we're gonna walk around at some point and see everyone else's booth hey we got Maddie. oh i love i'm vlogging too <laughs> oh you're vlogging too yes oh, good. Exception. are you on tiktok vlogging no I'm just, just, just YouTube. Oh, okay. God. <laughs> Guys, if you don't know her, she owns the content house. I mean, All right. Yeah, hello, what's everyone. good? Green, what's going on, Tyler? guys? We've got Grip Paranormal and Exploring with Josh. Um, so we're just hanging out at the Paracon here. We're I like go... how that screen looks. Yeah, I it's mean. Really it looks good. <laughs> it's really good. Is that the 13? Um, the 11 Pro Max. It still is kicking. Yeah. It's still kicking. I mean, it's pretty decent. I but, like it. So we're going to go check out the booths and maybe do some gambling because it's not a casino. Let's get it. Oh, we should all gamble after. Hey, not with though. Should. I'm a fucking baby. Oh, no, dude, I they forget wouldn't even know. Oh, they don't even know. Already? Yeah. Oh, all right, never all right. mind. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. You guys want to introduce yourself and what you do? I'm Cody, and this is my girlfriend, Satori. And uh, we're known as a paranormal couple, and uh, we are investigators with, with Satori's dad's team, TAPS, and uh, we are the curators of a haunted museum full of different haunted objects. And we talk to the dead. That's, uh, yes, we do very awesome team. stuff. We do. So, so make sure you go check out their stuff. Thank you. And they did a booth and everything. So, awesome. Stuff. Thank you. So, where did you guys even get this fire truck? Uh, so, different cases that we worked on. Pretty much, at least all of the stuff that we brought today is all been cases that we worked on. Um, and, like, by case, you mean, like, almost like how, like, for viewers at home, like the like the Warrens when they would go to the Conjuring House, they would take the item back. Right. Yes. So yeah, people people call us up and uh, it could last week. Yeah, and you know the last resort is taking it off. We don't want because a lot of this stuff means a lot to people. We've always right. told people we've been nicknamed the Foster Home for a lot of objects. But we always tell them if you ever want it back, you can have it back. But out of the hundreds of objects we have, <laughs> nobody's called them. No, no, no one wants them back. And do we believe everything is haunted or has an attachment? Uh, it hasn't shown itself for us. I mean, right. The majority of them have, okay. uh, but I think a lot of people, I mean, psychological right, effects right. and stuff like that can definitely play into it. Um, but, you know, we tell the stories. We want to keep the history alive and uh, keep the, uh, the people's stories alive. Yeah. For sure. And just share what's going on. And people seem to like it. So, uh, I think it's know. good. Yeah. All right. How about you pick one and I tell you? Well, dude, the clown's already sticking out. Okay. Right. So you pick one the clown. Let's talk about this clown right here. This clown came from Pennsylvania also. A gentleman had purchased this clown at a market and he didn't really know why he wanted to buy it. He just bought it because he felt like he was supposed to. Yeah. So he paid a couple dollars, he brought it home and sat it on the nightstand next to his bed. He uh, wakes to the sound of laughing and he says it sounds like it's coming from everywhere but nowhere. So he's looking left, it sounds like it's coming from the right. It's echoing all throughout his house. Um, so he freaks out, he sits up, and he looks over the nightstand, and the clown reportedly moved towards him, slid towards that him. That clown? Supposedly, yes. Silent but deadly. He got so scared, he jumped out of bed, drove to his brother's house, which was like 45 minutes an hour away, and um, made his brother hold him there for the night, like stayed with him. Till his brother came back, wrapped it up in a t-shirt, left it on the front porch, and we got the call to come home. 
and you just picked it up. So what? So so what do you do when you take these objects and pick it up? Is there anything you can do to cleanse it? Or the first thing we always do is put it in what we call a quarantine period. We put it in a room by itself in the museum, put cameras on it, equipment, and just monitor it for like two weeks. Just to let us know if it's something negative or somebody that we think is Right. Most of the time it does nothing. It does nothing during this period. And we find that when you move the object from one location to another, it kind of has to get acclimated to its new environment. Right. And uh, you know, Satori and myself, uh, people always ask, you know, what religion are you? What do you use to protect you and things like that? And uh, you know, we're definitely different. Story takes a more metaphysical approach. I always brought up Roman Catholic, so um, you know, prayer is a big thing for me and surrounding yourself in the right light and putting walls up and stuff like that. Uh, but everybody we found you have to do whatever you believe in. Right. So Tori can do whatever she does, but it probably won't work for you because you might not believe in the same thing. True. So, intentions are everything, so whatever you believe in, just do that. I believe that. Yeah. That's what I believe in too. Yeah. What else do you want to know about? So, besides this piece, which is amazing, what is going on with that? Yeah, yeah, that is cool. Oh, I got confused. I thought it said Michael Mars and they're talking about like Penny. Oh. Well, Penny's oh, because it's underneath. Oh, yeah. yeah. That is cool. Even the jigsaw one up there, Chucky. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of cool stuff here, like I wish I could handmade like and that. you can, bro. You just gotta believe in yourself, <laughs> man. Believe. You got it. I used to do cartoon characters. And that's I just did that's that. a start. Nice. I haven't seen Reed in a while either. I don't know Reed? where he went. Yeah. Reed's being Reed. You know what's missing? That's Reed. All right, so we are leaving Ocean State Paracon. I'm so sad, it's only 3 p.m., but unfortunately I am heading to Boston. I'm going to be flying home to Augusta instead of um, having Jen and Jacob meet halfway because that would be a really long way to go. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to head to the airport. I'm really nervous. I haven't traveled by myself um, airline anyway, since I want to say 2018. Yeah, I, I want to say that was 2018. So it's been a really long time, but so we're going to get heading out. I'm really sad, but here we go. Airport now, all by myself. I just makes anxiety really high, but it's okay. I'll be fine. Um, so I gotta go through TSA first, figure out where um, my terminal is. So here we go. All right, so I just got through TSA. I'm gonna go see where my um, date is now. I think I'm C27. Actually, it's a direction. <laughs> gotta go this way. C okay. I gotta go this way. Gate is C27. I think I also have to recheck in. It is so weird traveling by myself. I'm not used to this. Alright, so I just changed my outfit. It was sweating, so I was like, I'm gonna change it with some fresh clothes. So I have about an hour until my flight takes off. So I'm just gonna go look throughout the shops and maybe get some food. Getting in the airplane now. I'm getting a little nervous. I've never been on a small plane before I've held them. So really so interesting. I tried to get some work done as soon as I pulled my laptop out of their gun So I'm back with Jacob. I landed safely. Um, I really wish I could have vlogged the plane experience. It was actually really cool. It was a really tiny plane. Um, I'll probably try and insert a picture here somewhere of the plane, but they said no filming like on the runway and no filming or no phones on the plane. So unfortunately I didn't get any footage, but 
like going over Boston and just seeing like all the lights and stuff was so amazing. Um, we even got to sit like right where the pilots and stuff were. So we got to watch how they control and fly the plane. Um, the flight ended up only being like 45 minutes instead of an hour and 10 minutes. That was cool. Yeah, I would probably do it again. What do you think, Jake? What Would you do it again? Or, well, not, not, again? not would, would you do it again? I'm sorry. No, would you, would you go with me? Do you think you would of ever course, do it? Yeah. I've... yeah. Well, it was I neat. I think it'd be really cool. Yeah, it was pretty cool. And the people that I flew with were super cool. Um, currently just sitting at Sam's Club. We're doing an online pickup. Got a couple errands to run before going back to our apartment. But yeah, so I kind of wanted to finish out the vlog here. I'm sorry I didn't get to film or take pictures. I really would have if I could have. Um, however, yeah, that's about it. So... I'm going to end the vlog here and thank you for watching and make sure you stay tuned for other YouTube videos. <laughs>